Hello, my name is Bobby Ott, the superintendent for the Temple Independent School District, and I would like to present to you the final recommended package from our citizens in this community. This package is our bond package that was approved by the board when they called the election August 16th, 2021. The idea of a future bond in Temple ISD is not something that started a couple months ago. It was something that actually started in 2011. That was the first year Temple ISD had a comprehensive master facilities plan. That plan came to about $250 million, and as you can see on this slide, at that time the tax rate was $1.28. Temple ISD took its first strike at that master plan by passing a $55 million bond that year. Two years later, in 2013, Temple ISD went to the community for another asking and passed a tax ratification election, which raised the tax rate by eight cents. That wasn't to build buildings. That was for the other side of the tax rate that handles things like science lab equipment, library collections, and technology. Then two years later, Temple ISD took a larger strike at the original facilities master plan with the passing of a $136.5 million bond. But I'd like the community to know, in looking at this five-year span of time, that we had three askings in Temple ISD. But since 2015, up until now, we've had none. I think that's a very important fact. All we've done is school and done a great job of it and finished our projects from 2015. I was hired as superintendent in 2018. At that time, the tax rate was $1.40. We heard that there was a lot of growth in Temple ISD, so we wanted to conduct our very first ever demographic study. That demographic study panned out and actually validated the fact that we do have growth in the Southeast Quadrant, expecting over 2,000 units. The following year, in 2019, we conducted the second demographic study that also showed that we were actually growing even more in the southeast quadrant and also growing in the northeast quadrant over by Jefferson and Garcia. The school board had the foresight to go out and purchase 47 and a half acres of land right there on Old 95 and Barnhart in the southeast quadrant because all statistics show in the expert analysis that we would need another elementary school in that area. As you can see, the tax rate starts to drop. The reason the tax rate starting to drop is because values were going up and because House Bill 3 and the compression of the tax rate, the new school finance formula, and also because of our bond refinancing efforts. Temple ISD has done a great job in managing taxpayer dollars. The following year, we conducted our third demographic study, and that showed all the same data, but it also added that we would be growing in the Northwest Quadrant, which is by Kennedy Powell. A facilities master plan is good for about 10 years, and the last one that was, was done was in 2011. So we had some carryover items because we didn't finish all $250 million. So that became part of the new facilities master plan, plus the dynamic of growth and other programming. And that puts us where we're at today in 2021, going out for a bond. I do want you to notice the tax rate. This year, we dropped it even more from $1.28 to $1.24. That is a 16 and a half cent drop in the last three years. Temple ISD has lowered the tax rate each year for the last three years. This also frees up plenty of room for a 12 cent or 12 and a half cent tax increase through the bond. And here's a couple of the highlights, and I mentioned a few of them already, but these came out of our demographic analysis. First of all, Temple ISD will have over 9,700 students by 2025. That will be here before we know it. That's a thousand more students than we currently have. Very proud to boast that our student transfers into the school district have increased by 30% since 2014-15. As I mentioned earlier, Ray Allen and Kennedy Powell will see the largest growth in the next three years. So that includes our Southeast Quadrant, which is the immediate growth. And then in the distant future, the Northwest Quadrant, which is Kennedy Powell. The average new home price has increased from 183 to 210,000. And something very exciting is we're adding anywhere between 200 and 600 single family homes per year to 
the next five years in Temple ISD. This provides multiple options for our families in terms of housing inventory. And we will have more than 6,900 planned home lots in TISD within 11 future subdivisions. This slide shows us that growth is coming, it is here, and it is inevitable. The most important slide in this whole presentation is the why. When you're out somewhere and someone stops you and they say, hey, why is Temple ISD going out for a bond? Why did they call a bond election? Well, here's why. The first is to finish the job. We need to take care of our current families. These are family members that have been with us since 2011, 2015, where they have passed bonds to honor the original commitment of the first facilities master plan. Well, part of that is we had 47 portables in the school district in 2011, and our community spoke loud and clear and said, we don't want any more portables. We don't want kids in portables. We want them in main buildings. We've been able to chip away at this over the last couple bonds and, and rid ourselves of 27 of those portables with a remaining balance of 20. This bond would completely wipe away the portables. There are two ways that you can attack portables in a school district. One, you can eliminate them by building a school out somewhere of say 500 and rezoning everyone and moving them out of their neighborhoods and putting them in that school. Or two, you can go to those specific campuses and replace the portables with permanent wings that are attached to the main building that allow kids to stay in their neighborhoods. Plus, this is a more economical approach. Next, security vestibules. What is a security vestibule? This is where you walk into one set of exterior doors and then you have to be buzzed in through another set before you can enter the building. This is a safety and security feature. This is something our school district or our community rather wanted and we have them installed in every single camp at every single campus but three. Ray Allen, Hector P. Garcia and Kennedy Powell. This would finish that and make sure that all of our campuses have the same safety standards. Next, Wildcat Stadium renovations. We have put $36 million into CTE, 24 and a half into Fine Arts, and 13 into Athletics in the last two bonds. Wildcat Stadium was built in 1965, and there are plenty of pieces of that stadium that have not been renovated since, i.e. the bathrooms, uh, some of the fencing, the infrastructure under the track, seating, and so forth. So Wildcat Stadium renovations is definitely part of finishing the job. The last piece is renovate the food service and maintenance facility building. This building houses school nutrition, grounds, warehouse, and maintenance. This is a facility that was built in the 50s and today stands without heating and air conditioning. We would certainly want to make sure that the folks that take care of our schools also are in a facility that is, that's taking care of them and make sure they're in a facility that meets standards. Next, program equity. This also takes care of current families. We have four bellwether programs in Temple ISD. Advanced Academics, which that's taken care of through core classroom renovations, Fine Arts, Athletics, and Career Tech. In Fine Arts, we have a few gaps or things that need to be taken care of. Sure, we just finished the Fine Arts Complex in 2020, but some of our auditoriums at Meredith Dunbar and at the high school have some work that need to be done. Middle school, as far as athletics, we have no competition fields. This is a program gap that we have. And then in CTE, sure, we opened a new facility in 2018. We took care of every single program minus ag. Ag is a program that's growing and it is actually located away from the high school and it's on site, but it's actually away from the main CTE building, and it would certainly need to be redone. It hasn't been redone at all. And then growth, what I talked about earlier, welcoming our new families. Per the demographic analysis, this would require 14 classrooms across four campuses. That would be two at Kennedy Powell, four at Scott, four at Temple High School, and four at Bonham Middle School, because Bonham is the middle school located closest in the southeast quadrant. And then building that brand new elementary school. That is very exciting. This is something Temple ISD hasn't done since the late 90s. We have not added a school to the school system. So this is our 2021 bond timeline. We started this entire process obviously several months ago when we conducted our facilities master plan. But in March, we also put out a bond feasibility survey to the community, and this was even after the Temple College bond was called. 
And we put two numbers in that survey. One was 136 million and one was 185 million. And it came back favorable, both numbers did, in support of a bond for TISD. And this was actually before people even knew what projects were going to be included. We had a 57% favorability on the $185 million bond. I will tell you, for me, uh, I felt like that our response was to make sure that we would not exceed $185 million in any bond proposal that went to the board so we could be consistent with the community. So we started this in June 17th. This was the very first community engagement session we had. This session had about 140 participants. It was very well attended at the Mayborn Center. And I actually had to get everybody caught up. You know, we haven't had an asking in six years, five and a half, six years. So I had to sit down with everyone and share all the data, the new facilities master plan, the demographic analysis, our bond capacity, where are we at in terms of bond capacity, and the long range plan. The second community engagement meeting at the Mayborn Center once again was July 8th. We had about 110, 120 uh, participants at this meeting very well attended. In this particular meeting, and it was open to the public, by the way, in this particular meeting, we had all the projects in the facilities master plan. We had them all out. We had a chance to go out and describe those projects to the community. We had the cost out there so they could see them and all of the needs. And after the presentation, the community had a chance to go ahead and rank the bond packages not just the people in attendance, but this presentation has been on our website and we pushed the survey link out. It was on our website as well. And we kept the survey window open until July 20th. We had several respondents uh, from that. In fact, over 300 plus respondents uh, to this survey that ranked the projects. Then based on those rankings, we came up with two bond packages to go back out August 4th to the community. Once again, we had over 100 participants and presented both packages and allowed the community, not just the members that were there, but ones that weren't there, the opportunity to go ahead and rate each of those packages. And the, based on those ratings, one of them rated 4.7, which was the reduced scope package, and I'll explain that a little bit later, and the reduced projects package rated 2.0. So it was a very clear um, result from the community for the citizens to go present to the board the reduced scope package. That was presented August 16th by a group of citizens. They presented it to our board and the board called the bond election. So since that time, I'm presenting all over the place. In fact, I started August 17th at the Kiwanis Club and will be presenting nonstop all the way to the election date November 2nd. So what I would like to do now is I want to actually take what the citizens presented to our school board and present it to you, the community. And this is what I'll be doing on my presentations out in various parts of the community, including in different neighborhoods as well. But this is the citizens recommendation, the reduced scope. This package included all the projects, but reduced the dollar amounts to get us under 185 million as opposed to the reduced projects bond recommendation, which would have eliminated seven different projects. But this was the citizen's choice. And as I've said before, and I'm going to say it again, the job of a bond in setting the expectations in a bond comes from the community, not the school administration. The job of school administration is to execute. So you are going to get the recommendation that came from our citizens. So back to our four containers. Remember, we took our facilities master plan and we broke every project down. They fell into one of four containers, growth and capacity, safety and security, facility master plan project improvements. Those are basically renovations and equity and programs. All of this very, very consistent with our why slide. So this presentation will be broken down by these four containers to help the community and anybody watching this have an easier and better understanding of our bond package. So the first container is growth and capacity. And I've talked about this already, but here are the price tags associated with it. And this is all part of the bond package, 
that is now on the table for a vote. New elementary campus in the southeast quadrant. This campus would be on the land that's already purchased. That land is not in the bond. We've already purchased it. And this is a campus that would probably be anywhere between 800 and 900 students. And then the 14 classrooms I talked about earlier, two at Kennedy Powell, four at Scott, four at Bonham, and four at Temple High School. Pay particular attention to Scott and Bonham because not only do you have four classrooms, but you also have some other areas that we have to expand. You see, when you start adding 100 more students to a campus, which would be four classrooms or more, you have to start looking at, per architect standards, unstructured spaces like cafeterias, dining areas, libraries, parking lots, for example, gyms. Well, if you don't, you're going to have to start serving lunch at 8.30 in the morning to get everybody through. So that's why you see kitchen and dining and so forth in Scott and Bonham. Now, at Scott, you don't see library because we took care of that in the 2015 bond. At Temple High School, we would add four classrooms to the newer science wing in the very back of the high school. This puts all of our science classes in the back of the high school, and what it does is it replaces the science classrooms that are upstairs in the older part of the high school because those classrooms no longer meet lab space requirements. So we can convert them to English and math and history classes, which they have plenty of room for, but then actually move those science classrooms out. So we not only gain capacity here, but we also are able to upgrade our science lab. And this is just an example of what elementary number nine could potentially look, look like in the Southeast Quadrant. To the right, you actually see the property where Barnhart is up on the north side, and then you see on the south side, Canyon Creek and Old 95 actually runs north and south. Our elementary school would be up closest, and then the back part of the property would be for a later middle school. Now on to facility master plan project improvements. First is that facility that I told you it was built in the 50s with no HVAC, the Auxiliary Services Center. This is an opportunity to replace and renovate that entire facility on the block. For location purposes, this facility is on 5th Street between Avenue E and F on both the left and the right side of 5th Street. You'll see school nutrition, maintenance, warehouse, and grounds. These are the folks that fed our families during COVID seven days a week when folks lost jobs and had hours reduced and fell on hard times. These are also people that were responsible for keeping schools open all last year by working the enhanced cleaning package and making sure to disinfect in our school, disinfect our schools. These are also folks that, that have repaired pipes during the snowstorm, you name it. You cannot run a school district without these very critical services. These folks are the backbone of the school district and it is time to make sure that their facility meets standards. Transportation Service Center, this would be another place where we would have renovations at the current site. This, this place currently has a couple portables. We would renovate. We would make sure that they're permanent structures. These are the folks that were driving around elderly folks during the snowstorm, making sure they got to warm shelters, taking care of our community, getting people to medical appointments, also getting animals to veterinarian appointments. They're a critical part of any school district. Athletic Training Complex. I mentioned this earlier. We built our Career Tech Complex. That was $36 million out of the 2015 bond that opened in 2018. We opened our Fine Arts Complex. That was paid for out of the 2015 bond. $10 million opened in 2020. So our next program is athletics. Having a training complex that would have conference rooms, training rooms, weight room, injury prevention rooms, locker rooms, so forth and then Wildcat Stadium renovations. And you can see all the listed repairs there from seating to fencing to structural concrete repairs and so forth. And this is a rendering of what the new auxiliary service center would look like. That van that's pulling in, that is actually Fifth Street that it's gonna be pulling in on. And it's on Avenue E currently. But this whole facility would be a brand new facility and it would be an opportunity to partner with the city of Temple through the reinvestment zone because there's a lot of investment going on downtown and this can bleed into going down the bridge on 3rd Street into this area and connect as a hub going into the TMED development that's further south. What a wonderful opportunity to invest in the east side of our community and to also take care of our aging facilities. 
All right, this is the next slide, still the same container, Facility Master Plan Project Improvements. First thing up is the Temple High School ninth grade center parking lot. We would resurface that and demo the old Edwards Academy because that no longer is used with students. At Wheatley, that's our discipline alternative school. We have done elevator, uh, put in a new elevator there. We have also put in new windows, but we haven't done anything with respect to classrooms in the last several bonds or the halls or the lighting and so forth. So we need to get those classrooms up to standard. Digital marquees, we have them on every single campus except for Temple High School in Edwards. And then restroom upgrades, one of the highest ranked projects by the community to upgrade the restrooms at these facilities here. And then the campus infrastructure improvements and replacement cycles. So by the community's request, they asked for this to be detailed. And what you will see in this next slide here is that we listed every project, every campus, and the dollar amount in the number of classrooms affected. These are the things that you have to do to keep your campuses going so you can get as much life out of them as possible and maintain a high quality standard. Our next container is safety and security. Right out of the gate, we have seven remaining campuses that we need to update the fire suppression system and alarm upgrades. So those are listed there, Hector P. Garcia, Ray Allen, Western Hills, Bonham, Temple High School, Edwards, and Wheatley. We would also upgrade our security cameras at the middle school. We already took care of high school a year and a half ago, and elementary would be next in the queue, but we don't have to do all the cameras at once. We can kind of chip away at this. At a redundancy site for technology, this would be housed at Bonham Middle School, and this basically allows us to have multiple points of failure, so that way all communication links and lines don't go down if we have a single event. And then sidewalk pavement and lighting improvements at Meredith Dunbar, Temple High School, and Edwards Academy. Next, removing portables. Remember, this was a big one that the community wanted to see happen. If you look, that is where all 20 portables are located at those campuses, Hector P. Garcia, Kennedy Powell, Ray Allen, Cater, and Western Hills. We would replace, at all of those campuses, we would replace the portables with permanent wings, except at Cater. What we would do there is a rezoning effort in the Southeast Quadrant, and the new elementary school would absorb some of the students there. Sec security vestibules is next at the three remaining campuses, Kennedy Powell, Ray Allen, and Hector P. Garcia. Perimeter fencing at Temple High School and exterior door access control at the elementary. You notice only four campuses and that's because they're already pre-wired. It's the two newest ones, Jefferson and Thornton are the newest builds and then Western Hills and Scott Elementary because we've redone those front entrances. So they've been pre-wired. This gives us a chance to pilot this and kind of go into it with baby steps instead of going into it as a whole district-wide event and allowed us to reduce the scope so we can get under the dollar amount we needed to. The next container is equity and programs. We're going to start with middle school athletic facilities. We do not have competition fields at Travis, Lamar, and Bonham. This would give us an opportunity to have real competition fields there and also renovate practice gym and add weight room at Travis and do locker room upgrades at Bottom at Lamar. At that point, all three middle schools will have completely upgraded and equitable athletic facilities. At Bottom and Travis, we have the opportunity to actually add middle school tracks because we have the site space. So we would add tracks at Bonham and Travis. And keep in mind, our community here in Temple uses these facilities, unlike other school districts. So these are also walking tracks under the lights that would be accessible to our community as well. Lamar doesn't have the site space, so they would continue to use the um, uh, stadium and, and the field over at, uh, in the track over at Temple High School. They would have a field, but they'd use the track at Temple High School. Temple High School Fine Arts Auditorium improvements, we need to up the sound and video there. That hasn't been upgraded since 2007 and has run the course of its life. And I just wanted to show you a rendering of what one of the competition fields would look like. This is Travis Science Academy and this is actually behind the school. The city owns the property so this would be a partnership with the city of Temple. So this allows for our little league uh, sports to uh, compete on this field. Of course, our middle school sports and look at the walking track for the community in the area. This would include ticket booth, restrooms, track, uh, stadium seating, you name it. And it really dresses up this entire area and invests in this part of the community. 
This is a community facility, and this is an example of what one would look like. And then the last slide on equity and programs is this one here, our Ag Barn. We would do addition and renovations at its current site, and then we have some upgrades to do and some facilities we haven't touched in terms of athletics over at the high school, like cheerleading, upgrade the softball and baseball lighting. We haven't had a chance to do that. We have done tennis in the football stadium, but not softball and baseball. Upgrade those to LED and adding a girls soccer practice field over at Temple High School where the old admin building was and also taking care of our golf locker room. Replacement improvement of elementary playgrounds. Once again, community facilities. There are a lot of places in this community that do not have pocket parks, for example. So on the weekends, you'll see kids and families going to the elementary school playgrounds and playing on them. Well, these campuses here, we would need to renovate and upgrade or replace, rather, the playgrounds uh, to, a newer, um, uh, to newer equipment. And then last is the Meredith Dunbar Fine Arts Auditorium. Uh, everything is finished at Meredith Dunbar except for the auditorium seating. Those were installed in 1960 and they need to be replaced. And of course, when you do that, you've got to take care of the ADA access because at this point, they are not ADA accessible. So here's the summary. Proposition 1, $178.3 million. Everything I talked about earlier, finishing the job, program equity, growth, all the details are there. By law, if you do anything to a stadium, that's over a thousand spectator venue. You have to put that in a separate proposition. We are above board, transparent, and we will be legal. So Wildcat Stadium Improvements is a separate proposition when you show up to cast your vote. It is $6.6 .6 million to handle those. So here's what it looks like in terms of a breakdown. Total cost of Prop 1, as I mentioned earlier, 178 million three hundred thousand that is a 12 cent tax increase stadium proposition two for wildcat stadium 6.6 .6 million it's not even a penny it's a half a cent tax increase total bond package voting for both of them would be 184.9 million it's a hundred it's under 185 million total tax increase 12 and a half cents on a hundred thousand dollar valuation of a home Monthly, it's $10.42, and annually, it's $125. So if it's a $200,000 home, obviously, you would double that amount to $250 annually. 65 and older, there's no tax impact. That's a reminder that I have to put in there. But in my mind, being interested in your school district, it doesn't matter your age. It's very important for everybody. So when you hear $1.24 is Temple ISD's tax rate, what does that really mean? If you don't have a context or normative comparison on what that means, then you have no idea if it's high or low or average. Well, these rep this list represents school districts that we are compared with through the Texas Education Agency or ones that we compete with in UIL or ones we compete uh, with for teachers. You'll notice Colleen and Coppers Cove are not on here because that would not be an apples to apples comparison. Those two districts receive a lot of money through impact aid. And so they actually have a lot more money than the school districts list, listed here. If you look, Temple ISD and their tax rate of $1.24, it's not at the bottom and it's not at the top, but it certainly is in the bottom quartile. If you were to look at this and add another 12 cents or 12 and a half cents, that would get you above average, but it certainly wouldn't put you at the top. So what this slide demonstrates is that as a school district, we're not asking for anything above and beyond what school districts do in order to keep up their buildings and plan for growth. A dollar twenty-four plus another twelve and a half cents puts us right where we need to be, which is right above average. So voting information. Let me start by saying this. In order to vote in a November 2nd election, you must be a registered voter by October 2nd. There's an early voting window from October 18th to October 29th, and those are the sites listed there. And then, of course, the uniform election day is on November 2nd. For more information, you can please check the Bell County website for sites and addresses. Now, one thing I always like to do when I talk to the community is I like to give them an update on the previous year. So I want to start 
with this slide here. I want to remind you this was a year during COVID, but Temple ISD really excelled. We were a finalist for the TASB School Board of the Year. We were named top five school boards in all the state of Texas. Very proud of our school board members. We also had the Region 12 Elementary Teacher of the Year right here in Temple. Our K-12 through IB program was completely recertified. That's Scott Elementary, Travis Science Academy, and Temple High School. In fact, at Temple High School, we had a 100% IB Diploma Program graduation rate in comparison to the world average of 88%. <clears throat> Our students earned 531 college hours. That's 177 classes. They earned them through AP and IB, our advanced academics program. That passed on a total savings to our families of $146,000. We had 184 career tech industry level certifications that were earned. That is double what was earned the previous year. And we had over 120 students compete at the state or national level in fine arts, athletics, and CTE. This is double what we had the previous year as well. And also our Temple High School advanced in regionals for advanced ac or for academics in 11 of 17 UIL categories. This is very impressive. We have 20 varsity sports, 17 of them played in the playoffs. Our marching band won the region and we had state qualifiers in theater, visual arts, choir, and orchestra. Our kids did fantastic and I'm so proud of them and our parents for their commitment. We completed every single one of our 2015 bond projects promised to the community on time. We updated our facilities master plan and lowered the tax rate this last year, 6.71 cents, for an estimated three-year total drop of 16.3 cents. Our finance department won two state and two national awards. We provided free meals to all elementary students, and that in turn became secondary students as well toward the middle of the year and end, and our communications department won three statewide awards. Our school district has been very successful in the past several years, and it's because of you. It's because of the expectations you set, it's how hard our students and staff have worked, and at the very end of all of this, we want to make sure we don't let you down and that you are proud of Temple ISD. That is what has happened in the past. I will tell you that if you invest in us, this will continue to happen.